Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse at a time. Back with this, what day is it? I almost said Saturday. It's not Saturday. Wednesday, <laughs> right? It's Wednesday. Anna Kelly, how you doing, Anna? I'm doing great. Every day Saturday, Michael. <laughs> I know. I, I, I yeah. It, it, it actually, I heard my brain go kapunk. <laughs> like, what happened? <laughs> weird anyways uh we had a very heavy episode number one so we're going to change it up in episode number two we're going to talk about games games that help us understand finances maybe things that we didn't even appreciate when we were playing the games younger and of course i'm talking about monopoly cash flow <laughs> and if you played cash flow for kids that one as well so anna i'm sure you've played these games i play them yes and i play them with my kids as often as we can I loved Monopoly. Growing up, it was my favorite, favorite game. And I never thought I'd be in real life Monopoly buying, buying a, a land and all kinds of stuff. It's even more fun in real life. But I use it to teach my kids. And they've mm. learned a lot of really good lessons by buying property, going bankrupt, having to mortgage property, spending all your cash and not having anything left. So it's great, great teaching tools for kids to learn how do you manage money? When do you buy assets? When do you mm -hmm. buy doodads? And what could it, you know, what could it do for you? Um, and what could it do to you if you don't play it strategically? So love these games. It's a fun way that kids that drown out their mom, like, I know, I know, I know when they're playing a game, it's yeah. strategy and they have fun and they actually learn. Yeah. You know what? Let's, let's go through Monopoly first. We'll talk about one or two lessons, maybe two lessons each we've taken, and then we'll flip over to cash flow and talk about a couple of there. So Anna, as the guest, what is one of the real lessons you've seen you've either you've learned or you made sure your kids understood about Monopoly specifically? Sure. You know, one of the things is every time you own a property, you land on it, you get to buy the property. Then every time someone lands on it, they have to pay you rent, right? So the, the idea of the game is buy up as many spaces, as many properties as you can, you make people pay rent. Mm -hmm. Well, if you get all of one color, right, that basically you buy a block, then you can buy little condos and big houses on them and you can quadruple your rent. Mm -hmm. So one person can have a bunch of properties and they've spent all their money. They don't have much. They land on your property and have to pay you a thousand dollar rent. You can bankrupt them and you take the cake. So mm -hmm. buy property and wait, collect rent, keep raising your rents. And eventually you'll have, you'll have good properties and a lot of money. That's lesson number one. Yeah, the first lesson for me, I remember, um, so Teresa, my daughter's name, uh, I remember playing it really early um, and she never bought anything, right? She did the classic, she just wanted to go around the board and collect the 200 bucks, right? She didn't understand real estate yes. yet. So we, we had to explain to her that that was not really a winning strategy, <laughs> that, that uh, it's going to be very hard for you, uh, honey, to, uh, to win the game of Monopoly, really the game of life just collecting $200 for pass and go, right? Think, think about that being your work week, right? There's four sides of the board, right? Four work weeks to a month. And if that's all you're doing, uh, it doesn't really end well, right? As people around you are being strategic and they're buying and building their own monopolies or trading, you know, it feels probably good in the beginning, right? Because she looked like she had the most cash yes. early in the game, but um, that didn't end well. I thought that was pretty interesting. I remember, I remember, I still remember that game. I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting to see how this goes. Right. And, and it's a great life lesson because if you just keep collecting your paycheck, but you never own anything, you still may end up having to, to pay people for stuff, pay fines, go to jail. You still keep paying rent. And if and you never have inflation. any <laughs> and inflation, right. and if you never have any extra left over, you're eventually going to start running out because savings gets depleted over time. Yeah, it was really it was really interesting because again, just sitting here thinking about that day, it really is inflation, right? Her her wage never changed, so her nominal yeah. wage didn't change two hundred bucks. But as we built out, it, she had she had inflation, and unfortunately, by near the end of the game, she had inflation on every side of the board, and, absolutely, and, and wiped her out. She she just didn't understand. <laughs> she didn't <Yeah>. understand. <laughs> yeah, and you know it's interesting because you do have kids that are more naturally like. You, they want to play it safe, right? Yeah. So the ones that want to play it safe, they don't want to spend, let go of any of their money to buy something because it, it could be a long time before people land on it. You know, I've had that kid. That, mm -hmm. And then the other ones are like spending way too much. So on yeah. the other extreme, I've had my kids lose and, yeah. and I, you know, let them, and I don't let them win. You know, yeah, I try no. to show them strategy, but they need to learn. And sometimes there's tears and then 
But for the next time, I'm like, okay, now you got really smart because you messed up. So next time you're going to do better. Um, but one time my kid, my two girls went after me big time. They, they bought everything. Well, they were out of cash. Uh And so I bought, I only had two, two little squares. Right. But as soon as I got the squares, I put the condo hotels on them. So it was like a thousand bucks. And I knew they're going to run out of money and they're going to have to sell me their property. Mm -hmm. And so we played not just, you know, it's not enough to mortgage it, but I'll let you, I'll buy it from you to help pay off your debt, but I'm buying it at a discount. <laughs> and so when, when you go after too many, when you go after too many properties all at one time, yeah. right? I'm like, even if you mortgaged them all, you're bankrupt, you're out of the game. So you either choose to be bankrupt and out of the game or mama buys your property. I give you some money and, and you owe me a little, but not as much. And, you know, there's the tears, but they learn too. You cannot be all in real estate, mm-hmm. be building rich and totally cash poor mm-hmm. because one wrong move can also bankrupt you. Absolutely. And I learned that one the hard way, right? <laughs> when we get started, we take every piece of extra money to have that equity to buy the next one. And then I would pray that an AC unit didn't go out because I didn't have any cash left because I put it all in the building, right? Yep. You can only do that for so long. But winning really is a balance of the strategy of making sure you're buying when you can, you buy wisely things that are actually going to pay more rent, right? So you don't want the first couple, the brown and the light blue, you want to get up to the higher colors that are going to give you more rent. But you learn to balance having cash, being patient, not spending at all, because if your opponents have everything it'll bankrupt you too. So that's the other side of that equation. Yeah, the last one we'll talk about Monopoly before we get into cash flow for me is as you get into the game, you really do start to trade, negotiate, barter, right? Yes. And it is amazing uh, how much of that is, re- is real life, right? In, in real estate, you really are negotiating with a buyer or a seller. They want this, you want that. And you know the best deals, both parties come out winning, right? So it's not win-lose, it's win-win. And you know, the ability to listen to what they want. Maybe you think they want this, but they really want that. I mean, wholesalers, for example, today always think it's about cash and a quick close. You know, sometimes they, they don't want to close for 60 days because they want to wait till their kid graduates or, you know, who knows? Um, I think Monopoly really teaches you to, uh, to listen and, and to, go, to negotiate win-win transactions. So I think Monopoly is a great game. It has been a while since we played it at home. Maybe I'll, I'll go see if Olivia wants to play it. But uh, yeah, so Monopoly is a great game. Now, how about cash flow? Cash flow is next level. Um, cash flow is super fun. I do want to say one thing that's worked that with Olivia. There's a game called Ms. Monopoly. Oh. And it's about being entrepreneurs. So you're landing uh, on businesses that you're buying instead of land. But we do different forms. So we have Yoda Star Wars Monopoly. We have ocean city boardwalk monopoly changes it up a little bit so they get a little more excited it's not so monotonous but um, my kids have grown to love that cash flow is a whole nother level right so it was put out by robert kiyosaki and it kind of teaches you about being in the different quadrants Mm -hmm. of income either you're going to be an employee you're going to be a business owner you might be a passive investor who buys a bunch of stock You, you can buy real estate um, and, and what you do is you, you basically start out with a job and you start out with a certain amount of income mm-hmm. and then you start out with a certain amount of expenses. So it might say, hey, Michael, um, you're a teacher and you're going to make 40 grand a year and your rental expense is going to be 24 grand a year and you got $500 a month to eat and you got $20 a month to buy stuff. And, and do, they call them doodads, right? Yep, yep. Someone may be a firefighter, a politician, you know, different levels of jobs. But what's interesting is the more the income is, usually the more the expenses are too, right? So you've got this job and, and you're going around the rat race. You know, you're just on the hamster wheel. You're working uh, and you, taught, you, you throw a yeah. dice and you land on things. Mm-hmm. And when you land on things, um, you get to make a decision what you're going to do with it. Well, not only do you have your, your cash flow sheet, here's my income, here's my expenses, here's my net and how much I have left. You have a ledger, you have a balance sheet. So yes. you're, you've got assets and you've got liabilities. And so the key is if you start buying stuff to where your expenses are more than your income every month, you can go bankrupt, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And if you have liabilities that are bit, you know, greater than your assets, you can go bankrupt. Mm-hmm. So the key is you have to learn if I land on something that says I can buy stock, you know, you can buy stock 
It's normally 40 bucks and you can buy it for 35. Do you want to buy it? Mm -hmm. Well, if that's going to almost bankrupt you, you really can't afford to buy the stock. You got to wait, right? Or maybe you land on a trip to Paris. Well, are you going to spend all your money on a trip to Paris? Or are you going to wait and try to buy stock or buy property? So it, it's real life decisions about how what we choose to spend our money on. It's either a doodad, a thing, mm -hmm. or it's an investment, how those things can make or break us. And if we create enough passive income, dividends, rental income, et cetera, that always our income can be way better than our expenses, then we can start you know, taking steps to back away work, to retire and get out of the rat race, mm -hmm. and then go do whatever we want to in retirement. So it's an amazing teaching tool. Yeah, my first kind of lesson, and again, I got the original cash flow game when it was all paper based. Now I guess they have an online one that's does yeah. all the math for you. But tying the income statement and the balance sheet, that 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 game makes it fun. And you get a pencil and an eraser, and you're messing all the numbers up. And most people don't do it right the first time. And it really helps people understand how income and buying assets can flow to the balance sheet, vice versa. And, then the whole doodad things that, oh, by the way, you land and have a kid and you realize your expenses go up and yes, it, it's all of those things. So uh, I think, I think it's the only game that I know of that actually introduces an income statement and a balance sheet and yes. actually makes it, at least for me, it was fun kind it of is. seeing how everything tied together. And my daughter got it. I mean, she, she probably like, again, she was older, so it's probably not a fair comparison, but we must've played the cash flow game. Once we got, I think I got it for a Christmas present over a decade ago, maybe even two decades. And I think we played it like every weekend for like six months or something. It was, it was, it was like yeah. a family thing and she got really good at it. So um, yeah, shout out Robert and Kim for that game. It was, it, we still, it's still a game that we played. I think we played it over Christmas break once. So um, yeah, it, it's pretty interesting. It's amazing. My, my second favorite game when I was a kid was the game of life. Do you remember mm, the game yeah. life? And yes, you have right. babies and you put them in your car and you spend a little bit of money. It's kind of like a combination of Monopoly yeah. and the game of life, but with accounting statements. And mm -hmm. we first bought cash flow for kids. And my kids were only eight and 10 when we first played. Mm -hmm. And the first couple of times we played, they cried and cried and cried because they lost all their money because ah. they bought a bunch of doodads. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is how it happens. I give you, I give, I don't give them allowances. I give them commissions if they do work. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you get a commission because you did work, and you go spend it all on doodads, you have nothing left and you're going to cry because you're going to want all this stuff, right? So they cry the first couple of times. I thought this is never going to work. Right? <laughs> but after a couple of times, they're like, oh, I want money. So what I did, Michael, is I, I incentivized them with real money. Ah. So like, whoever wins gets real money and whoever loses Lose, you know, you, you just lose. I didn't take money from them. That would have been a little mean. But, um, <laughs> you go from A to B. <laughs> so, so we did cash flow for kids a couple of times. So I decided, wow. you know, one night we were at the beach. It was like 10 o'clock at night on a weekend. I was like, let's play cash flow, the adult version, mm. not realizing how many hours it would take. But I, said, <laughs> I said, we're going to learn. And whoever stays in gets $5. If you last till the end, whether you win or lose, you get five bucks. Okay. My two oldest, they flaked out about midnight, two hours in. My two youngest, they stayed up till almost 2 a.m. in the morning playing cash flow and they won money and they were so excited. So awesome. what did they want to do the next time? Play cash flow for real, right? Nice. So you, just, you up the ante a little bit. They learned so much though, just from understanding, you know, what eight and 10 year olds, 10 and 12 now understand income, less expenses equals net. And mm -hmm. I've got assets or liabilities. And if I buy more assets, it pays the liabilities. And most adults don't even get that. Yeah. So it's, it's an amazing teaching game. We absolutely love it. You just got to plan for it to last a couple hours. Yeah. One other thing I remember about the cash flow game when I when I took it out the first time, right? It comes in a big purple box like this big. You take it out, the board's kind of gigantic, right? Yeah. It's probably, I don't know, two by three feet, maybe. It's it's, it's big. big. But then you play like this much of the board for like 90% of the time, right? It's called the rat race, the wheel, right? It looks like a wheel. And then there's uh, the fast track. Yes. That is, having gone from this to this, it is so true. The yeah. opportunities, all of these things that are about, it, it, I, I just think it's amazing. Just, I did not know about the rat race until I was 30 something years old. This is, this game clearly shows 
the rat race. It's it's eye opening. I play it and I still go. I can't believe I was stuck in this damn thing for forty some years. Absolutely, and they don't teach this stuff in college. They don't teach it to you when you're going to get your series six and your series seven and all no. that kind of stuff. It's invest until you're sixty five, and then you'll have enough to retire and pull out. Right. Mm-hmm. I love that this game lets you see the impact of your decisions today on tomorrow. What's possible. And also the fact that it exposes you to so many different things, like it ex- exposes you to buying stock and stock splits and mm-hmm. dividends and all those kind of things. So it's not just for real estate investors, but it opens your eyes to thinking, I need to not just be a worker. I need to find other ways to put my money to work for me mm-hmm. and other ways to invest. So it's, it's an incredible, fun, fun game. Um, you can get it on Amazon and I think on the Rich Dad Poor Dad website. I think that's the only place you can get it. It is expensive, but it's it well worth it. Just get the game. Yeah. The, the one thing I want to ask, so I played it a lot. The um, the one time I remember pulling my hair out, I played it with a buddy. We were at a sales conference and it was, I don't know, we didn't want to go out. So we decided to play this game, right? I It, I, it was so important to me. I bought it on a, I brought it on a sales trip that tells you everything you need to know about me and how warped I am. But anyways, we both were doctors. We didn't do the whole pick a game. We both wanted to be the highest income. Yes. This game lasted like four and a half hours because the more income you make, the harder it is to get out of the rat race. Yes. That's what people don't realize, right? If you, if, now that I've played it so much, I'll be a teacher or a policeman every time. Just give me that. I'll be happy. I'm good. I could probably get out in 30 minutes, but yes. Ugh. Yeah. It's kind of like you said, you know, there's a lot of people that say, don't worry about telling people to live below their means, right? You, you need to expand your means. But for most people, if you're starting out in the rat race and you don't have a lot of other money, you've got to learn to live below your means while you work to expand your means. And this game teaches you to do that too, because if your expenses keep going up, every time we make more money, we upgrade the house, we upgrade, upgrade the car, we buy more furniture, we take more trips, you know, you can still be very poor and have a really great income. Yeah. Well, Anna, do me a favor. How can people find you and be part of your world? Because you're doing some amazing things. Thank you so much. You can find me on social media, Anna Kelly, REI Mom on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. My website's reimom.com. If you're interested in passively investing as an accredited investor in large multifamily apartment buildings where we make a true impact on our residents, you can follow me there at greaterpurposecapital.com. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Michael.